Lesson on energy. We use energy in our lives every day, but what are the different types of energy? Well, we know about light energy, sound energy, heat energy, nuclear fission energy from reactors, nuclear fusion energy from the sun, this girl pedaling her bicycle down the street has kinetic energy, spring energy, chemical potential energy stored in this battery, and as we push our rock up a hill, we're giving it gravitational potential energy. One classification of energy is mechanical energy. There are two types of mechanical energy. The first type is kinetic energy. That is the energy of motion. As you see Einstein pedaling his bicycle, he has kinetic energy because he has mass and, more importantly, velocity. To calculate the amount of kinetic energy he would have, we just take one-half times the mass times the velocity squared. The other type of mechanical energy is potential energy. This potential energy is due to gravity and height. Here we can see this ball on top of this mountain at a certain height. If we want to calculate the potential energy of this ball, we'd need to know the mass, the acceleration due to gravity, and its height. Well, what are the units of energy when we calculate its Ke and Pe? Here you can see James Prescott Joule in which the units of energy were named after. So all our units of energy are joules, or J for short. Conservation of energy. What does conservation mean? Well, it's really a fancy physics word for the same or equal. That is, the total energy is the sum of all types of energy. So our total mechanical energy would be the sum of the potential energy the object has plus the kinetic energy the object has. And since energy is conserved, the total amount of energy is constant. That is, the total amount of potential and kinetic energy I have to start with is the same as the final amount of kinetic energy and potential energy I end up with. Let's conceptually describe the energy transformation below. Here we see this person with this ball on top of this hill. What type of energy does it have right here? Since it has height, it has potential energy. Now what's going to happen when we release the ball and let the ball roll down the hill over here? What's going to happen to the potential energy the ball has as it rolls down the hill? Now the potential energy the ball had here at the top is going to be transformed into kinetic energy of motion as it rolls down the hill. And the amount of kinetic energy it will have at the bottom of the hill will be the same as the amount of potential energy it had at the top of the hill, since the total amount of energy is constant or conserved. Let's do some sample calculations. What is the kinetic energy of a 1,200 kilogram car traveling at 20 meters per second? Here we can see this car traveling at 20 meters per second down the road. Its kinetic energy is given by 1 half its mass times the velocity squared. So let's substitute in 1,200 kilograms for the mass and 20 meters per second for the velocity. Here we have 1 half times 1,200 kilograms times 20 squared. If you do out the calculation, this will give you 240,000 joules of kinetic energy. Now, what is the potential energy of a 0.6 kilogram basketball at a height of 4 meters? Here we have the basketball at a height of 4 meters above the court. Its potential energy is given by its mass times the acceleration due to gravity times its height. Here we have its mass of 0.6 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times its height of 4 meters. This gives a potential energy of 23.52 joules. Now you're ready for the in-class activity of bouncing basketballs. In class, you'll drop a ball from a height of one meter, which you can measure with the meter stick. You'll then apply the law of conservation of energy and determine what types of energy the ball has here when you're holding it, what types of energy it has as it's falling, and what type of energy it has as it makes impact with the floor. You'll then determine the amount of mechanical energy lost and also calculate the COR of each ball which is the coefficient of restitution, also known as the bounciness. The bouncier a ball, the higher the coefficient. The less bouncy a ball, the lower the coefficient. You can calculate this coefficient of restitution by taking the square root of the bounce height it, ba it bounces back up to, divided by the height you dropped it from. This is useful in the NBA, where there's a rule for a ball to be game-worthy. The ball must bounce back up to a certain height. 
so that the players have a rhythm to their bouncing down the court. Thank you for watching and see you in class.